Hello everybody. I want to do a little setup video for Germantown. You know, because like they say, you don't know what you don't know until you post on YouTube. I got a few things wrong. And it's interesting because I thought I had read the setup very carefully. But I had some preconceived notions in my head and I just skipped over it. Just things didn't process right. And this actually was the issue we had with pub battles in the very beginning. The rules were very simple, yet people were finding them incomplete and confusing. And the reason was is because they were simple, but they were very different. And people were coming in with assumptions and were going, why are you doing that? It doesn't say to do that in the rules. Well, every other game they've ever played in the last 30 years did that. So anyway, some things to note when you're setting up. Now the British have their setup area over here as shown up here. But it also says in the setup rules, that a, a detachment can start in Chew House. One detachment without support may occupy Cliveden. Cliveden or Chew House as it's called. So one detachment can set up there. Now you put them out, ordinarily you'll place them like that. And say it's, we know that it's just a detachment in this scenario. And it, it can't be flanked and it gets all the protection, all the qualifications of a building. But only a detachment can be in there. So what I like to do, I've decided to do, is set the detachment on end like that. It's much of men in a stone house. Gonna cause some problems. The other thing I had assumed and read incorrectly was that all the British commanders started on the map. And then it went, oh no wait, Nefasin shows up on turn three. Well actually, if you look at it, it clearly states that you start with Howe in charge of everybody, and then the Fossen shows up and runs his troops on turn three, and on turn five, Cornwallis shows up and runs his troops, and Howe just becomes an army commander where he can command troops, but doesn't actually activate any to move. Now, if you have any further questions with this, leave a comment below. It also says, free game. And they're basically saying it's fun to play the historical battle to see what went on, but they highly recommend playing with free setup. This allows players to pick their own forces for the battle. In many ways this captures the spirit of the battle because it was con you didn't know the enemy was doing. Now what they mean by that is you can assign whoever you want to each command. You don't have to go by the historical setup. So to not confuse myself with the British commands, I've kept them essentially the same. The American commands I run a little differently. To not confuse myself, I've put each militia with its militia commander. And I put one detachment with it so that it can flank something it runs into. Because I intend to use them as troublemakers in the back. When it comes to Washington, Sullivan, and Green, I apply I have three basic infantry in each of Sullivan and Green. Washington has one regular unit, which I put that with a detachment so it could theoretically flank someone or prevent itself from being flanked. I've also added the, can the cannon and all the supplies with Washington. And that's what they mean by free setup. Now I've begun with the militia on the flanks, Smallwood and Armstrong, and separated the three HQs coming in from the, uh, the north. Now the reason I separate them is because they're in column. And if I put them all in one row, that makes for a real long column. And this was a concern for armies back in the day. The columns were so long they had, they would, ideally they wanted to be moving on separate but parallel roads. So we can do that here. We've got three, we've got my three columns coming in on larger columns coming in on three different roads. Out here I just have how The entire British force is with him. It's on his reserve card. Now to start, you can either start a variation. You can start in the morning. They didn't march through the night. They got everyone lined up and ready to go in the morning. And then you start with everyone back here on turn one. If you decide to do a night turn, two HQs got lost. Two commanders got lost walking around in the dark in the night. So what you do so I've got my chits here. Here's all the American chits. They have a free move in the night because they're moving in the night. So I put all the chits in the cup, but only the first three I draw out move. The other two got lost. Now they'll come in on the day turn. So we begin with the night turn. 